Hello loves, welcome to my uh, late winter, early spring, all the things favorites video. So this is not going to be really very witchcraft or tarot focused. This is more just things that I've been loving and enjoying. I had a few of you reach out recently and ask if I would just share some more like general life things that I enjoy. Um, and so that's what this video is going to be about. I have like... <laughs> a shit ton of stuff to share because I am a Taurus and I'm always, you know, having fun with um, making my life as, uh, you know, comfortable and yummy as I, as I possibly can and just enjoying playing with colors and music and things like that. So we're going to talk about everything in this video that I've been enjoying. Um, we are in the middle of a giant snowstorm again. Yes, I'm recording on March 14th and we're in the middle of another snowstorm. Um, and there's no school today, so you will hear Vincent downstairs playing. It's just kind of how it is. Today's recording day, so we're going to work with it anyhow. Um, I'm going to share one tarot, uh, one Oracle deck, excuse me, that I'm really in love with. Um, but outside of that, pretty much everything else is going to be more about, uh, makeup, candles, books, music related that I'm really, really enjoying. So yeah, um, March has actually felt more like winter than most of winter felt here. Um, we've just had so much snow and it's honestly been a little difficult not to feel um, a little bit depressed with all of that. There's been a lot of gray days, a lot of snow, a lot of, you know, cleanup. Tomorrow my cleanup before I get Vincent to school is going to be intense. So a lot of shoveling, a lot of things like that. And that's been, you know, not my most favorite thing to deal with. Um, you may also see, oh, geez, that I have changed my hair color. Um, I went a year and three months with just black hair. Um, it was a wonderful experience, but uh, changing my hair color yesterday, I can say that it's so nice to have red again and that I don't intend to go long periods of time um, without changing my hair in the future. I really love the fun of like three to six months with red hair, three to six months with black hair. Of course, I've been, you know, uh, fooling around with extensions and wigs and things like that. So you'll st still see all of those. But I really, really love um, just changing up the look for myself. And I, the first thing I'm going to talk about on my list is hair related. So if you all are wondering, I do everything my own, by myself. I cut my own hair, I dye my own hair. Listen, I am a cosmetology dropout. I was a makeup artist and a salon coordinator at a salon in my 20s for a long period of time. My hair was more messed up and fried working with professionals than it's ever been doing it myself. And I've been dyeing my hair since I was 19. So I have no intention of, you know, um, letting someone else touch my hair. I do my hair myself. If I mess it up, it's my fault. Um, but I found a really great way of lightening my hair that does not over damage it as long as I only do that twice a year. 2021, I, I did a little bit too much. So we learned that lesson. But um, I actually used Vampire Red from Manic Panic this time. So it's like a little bit darker. I usually do Pillar Box Red. Um, and I actually really like it. Like it came out really, really well. I'm really, really happy with it. So, um, the color that's in, if you are interested yourself, it, it's Manic Panic Color Box Red. Um, you can see, I actually got a little bit <laughs> on my shoulder there. Um, just a caveat to that guys, I'm like in a really chatty mood. So it's going to be a long video for those of you who like my long form videos. Enjoy this one. Um, but you cannot just throw Manic Panic on your regular hair. It needs to be lightened in some way. The more porous your hair is, the happier your hair is gonna be taking something like Manic Panic. Or um, I really like Lunar Tides, but I was waiting for Blood Moon to come in. Just Some of you know, I live in the middle of nowhere. My struggle with my post office is real. Um, I'm waiting for Lunar Tides, to, my Lunar Tides order to come in, but it didn't, so I had Vampire Red at home, so I figured I'd give that a try. But I like um, Manic Panic or Lunar Tides. Those are my favorites for the semi-permanent colors. Um, and I really like Blood Moon and True Lost by Lunar Tides and Pillar Box Red and Vampire Red by Manic Panic. So that's what I use. But I just want to, you know, caveat to all this for you guys is 
uh, if you want to try that yourself, um, that's on you. And you do have to lighten your hair if you want a really vivid result and an even result. Um, but I don't have the container to show you because I didn't think to save that container last night when I used the Vampire Red, but super, super, super happy with how this color came out. It came out really, really even, and I like it. I like this little bit of a darker red. Um, we'll see if I keep it as it go more into spring. If it ever feels like spring here, I might lighten back up to the Pillar Box Red, which just washed my hair a few times and I'll be able to do that. So that's the fun thing about the semi-permanent colors. Um, yeah, they're really awesome. So, but I do want to talk about if your hair is damaged. Um, I did pick up the Redken Acidic Perfecting Concentrate Leave-In Treatment at the recommendation of a friend of mine. And this stuff is amazeballs. Oh my God, my hair is so soft and it feels so healthy right now. You would never know. I just used um, a color remover on it to take the, 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 the black out. Like this stuff is amazing. So if you do have damaged hair, this is awesome. Um, it is pricier. You do have to go to like Ulta or a professional um, salon um, in order to get it, but it is worth the investment and you use so little. This is going to last me for a long time. So this is really worth the investment. So again, that's Redken Acidic, Acidic Perfecting Concentrate. I just got the leave-in treatment. Um, I, I think I may invest in the shampoo and conditioner though. I'm really, really happy with this one. Two other hair products I've been loving. Uh, I did go back to Redken Guts. I have uh, fine hair and I have to say, I do love Redken Guts. I always go back to this. So it's like a, volum a volumizing and a thickening mousse. And if your hair tends to be flat or it, or it's fine or thinner, using this does make a difference in styling. Um, and if you're someone who likes to tease your hair, both of these products are amazeballs for that. Like they create a nice foundation for your hair to hold the tease. Um, this is the Chi Texturizing Spray. I actually got this at TJ Maxx, so I'm not sure if they still make this, but this is really good. It has a very interesting, like, you know, Chi products, you know how they smell. Um, it has an interesting fragrance, but it doesn't last. I think if it was a fragrance that lasted, it would be too much for me, but it's really not. So if you are looking for something to give texture so that when you style your hair, it holds a style. And again, if you have a similar um, type of hair as I do, which is fine, um, doesn't like to hold, like this is the thing is I actually like my hair when it's a little bit damaged because I can do a lot more with it style-wise, especially when it comes to vintage styling. So something a product like this is really wonderful to have in my arsenal of hair uh, tool items. So these two amaze balls, love them. You might want to, you know, purchase that if, if you're looking for something that does that. Let's see, since I'm on hair, I talked about what color dye I use because I know some of you are going to ask that. Okay, let's talk about makeup stuff. So I have a few things here. Um, you guys know I'm a makeup junkie. I love makeup and I love red lipstick and I don't use much red lipstick as I have and I'll never apologize for how much red lipstick I have. Red lipstick makes life better. Um, I did try, instead of trying a bunch of cheap things this month, I decided to try one high-end lipstick and this is Natasha Denona's I Need a Rouge in Amelia. I got the stiletto lipstick and the uh, liner. Guys, oh my God, if you like, this is not um, a liquid lipstick. Okay, it's like a tube lipstick, right? But it lasts better than some of my liquid lipstick and it's really soft on your lips. And it's like, I, I, I ate two meals with this on the other day and it was like, I never ate a meal. Like it, I never had to reapply this color. <laughs> I was in shock at how well it worked. So it is like 28 bucks, but I only had to apply it once and it lasted all day. And the color is gorgeous. It's like this beautiful, it's the deeper red. She did another, um, there's one other color in the range, which I'm not really going to get. It's more of like an orangey red called Gigi, but I really like this one. So this one is Amelia. I do think getting the liner is worth it with this because they worked really well together. So that's been a favorite red of mine this month. Um, I'm also really into black lipstick right now. And I like when my hair is red, I like the contrast of a black lip with red hair, just like I like the contrast of a red lip with black hair when my hair is black. Um, this is Kaleido Scorpion Fruit. 
Um, I'm probably showing that to you upside down, therefore not helpful. Uh, I love Kaleidos liquid lipsticks. They're only like 12 bucks. They feel like you're wearing nothing. They're very comfortable for all, way, all day wear. Like you actually forget that they're on your lips. The thing that makes this black different is that it's like a warm black. There's purple tones in there. And so it's like this, I don't know how to describe it. It's like this full body black. It has real dimension to it when you wear it. It's, it's a very unique black. This is the most unique black I have besides like Black Moon Cosmetics Sorrow or the mermaid one that's like the black green. But this is a really unique black. And in fact, when I went into Ulta to get this, the person behind the, um, excuse me, the cashier, the person behind the counter was like, oh my God, what black is that? Like, I need that black lipstick in my life. So it's really different. If you like black lipstick, this is really cool. Caution on Kaleidos though, you, they are um, overseas. And so it takes a really long time to get your product. Just just an FYI, I tend to buy like a couple things at once when I order from them because I'm not gonna, it's not something I'm gonna place multiple orders on. Along with that is one of the Kaleidos blushes. Um, this doesn't have the name on it, but it's the pink one. I did pick up this with that Scorpion Fruit color. This blush is amazing. It's totally worth it. Um, I cannot remember the name of this one off the top of my head and I thought it had it on the box. Um, I will post a link to the site and I'll try to remember to post the link for this specific blush. But if you want that like bubblegum pink, this blush is awesome. It's really good. It's an affordable price. It lasts really well. I've been like low key obsessed with blushes the last couple months. Um, and so here is the next thing on my list blush wise. This is Give Me Glow Cos Give Me Glow Cosmetics, which I'm like really obsessed with this brand too. Their blush in Twin Flame, I'm actually wearing it right now. When I have red hair, I really love apricots and oranges as far as blushes go. And this is amazing. I do want to say to you though, you get a lot of product, like a lot of product, a lot of bang for your buck here. Um, this is really intense. Like the color payoff is insane. So if you do purchase any of their blushes, which I, I mean, I only have one of their blushes, but I will purchase more when I'm ready to um, get more blush. It, it has intense color payoff. So please just be aware that a little bit goes a freaking long way with this. So let's see, what else do I have on my makeup list? Okay. Um, I have been like really wanting a full coverage foundation again. Um, I went, I went like most of last year. Last year was an interesting year for me. Um, and I think I needed to like shift things up a little bit, but now I'm ready to like come back to some cornerstones of being racing. And one of those is a full coverage foundation. And I went back and tried, I am magic velvety matte foundation by Juvia's place. This is in, um, Marico 710 is what I have on right now. I love this. I love, excuse me. I love this foundation so much. Like I put it on, I've been wearing it the last few days and I was like, Oh, that's why I love full coverage foundation. I just love that like very vintage, just like matte, beautiful, lovely, full feeling of a full coverage foundation on your skin. Um, it is really full coverage. So if you do not like full coverage foundation, I wouldn't try this. They have a, a new one they just released that's like more pearlescent and softer and a little bit lighter and so if you are interested in that I, you know I'd say give that a try I actually really like Juvia's Place I have a, a basic palette of theirs that I use for everything and when I travel it's like that one palette I can stick in my um, my makeup kit and I can use it for everything I can use it for contour I can use it for blush I can use it for eyeshadow I really like Juvia's Place and they're very reasonably priced so this foundation it's everything. I love it so much. I'm so happy with this. Um, I will say I'm about to turn 39. As I've gotten older, definitely, um, like I think my biggest concern has been like wrinkles under my eyes and not wanting a product to set too heavy in those wrinkles. I use a small, um, what's the name, concealer brush with this around the eyes. And I've found that once I set that with powder, it eliminates that concern that I was having. Like I moved from using a beauty blender sponge to a, a concealer brush, and I've really had a lot of uh, good results from that. So if you have a similar concern and you still wanna use uh, a full coverage foundation, I would say give that a try. I have two eyeshadows to recommend. 
for uh, late winter. I'm dying. I wish it was spring. <laughs> These are also from Give Me Go Clock. Clock. Give Me Glow Cosmetics. Um, and there's single pan shadows here. So this is Whiskey. I actually have it on right now. And then the match that I have on right now is this. Oh my God, guys, it's called Dirt Road. I love a dark brown that's almost black. It just makes my heart so freaking happy. Uh, and this is the, this is beautiful. I have to say, give me Glow, glow Cosmetics. I really like their eyeshadows. And so far, I also really like their blushes. So I have been playing with those and they've been giving me artistic inspiration and just getting me through the winter blahs. Two final makeup things. Um, I'm back to Urban Decay's All Nighter uh, Ultra Matte Spray. I tried the Jeffree Star one and I honestly, one of the very few products of his I did not like. I went back to Urban Decay, really happy with that. I do like Jeffree Star's um, Make Me Melt Makeup Removing Balm. It's really, really good. So I highly recommend that if you're looking for one. Guys, I know he's controversial. Not getting in, not getting into it here. His liquid lipsticks and his makeup are, are good. And so that's all I care about. I don't care about all the other stuff. Let's see. Okay. We did makeup and beauty. I decided to go with this beautiful like earthy fox colored red for my next journal i haven't finished putting all my things together i have started working in it but um you know as far as stickers and quotes and things like that but i love this color so much i love 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 this color so much i'm so happy with this journal it just makes my heart happy every time i look at it i love this color i actually might purchase another one in this color just to have on hand when i'm in that mood because it's perfect so I know a lot of you guys are going to be happy about this. We're talking about candles next. So um, I'm, I'm obsessed with October occult candles. I'm not even going to lie. Not even going to lie. I am obsessed with them. Uh, I purchased a sample size of tarot and tea. Oh my God. I already burned through it. She's gone. Oh, it smells so good. It's like what I imagine when I do a tarot reading, if if I was a scent, I think it would be this. It's so delicious. So this is, says divination, incense, honey, tobacco, and vanilla. Mm. It's, it's like, it just hits all the pleasure points for me. The candle Vincent and I have been loving together is Horror Movie Night, which is buttered popcorn, brown sugar, sea salt, and movie theaters. It really does remind me of being a kid. And Vincent and I like to make popcorn and watch movies together at night. And so this is like, indicative of us hanging out and we love this one so I had purchased a sample size and I repurchased full size you can see I've made a fair amount through with that one I really really love this one the other one that I've been loving is so the uh the wonderful woman behind October Occult um she's also a witchy lady and um she also loves horror movies and she just like tickles my fancy on so many levels. I really love her vibe. I love her shop. I love what she creates. Like she's really cool. But if you send her a horror movie that you love, the title of it, she will craft, handcraft a candle for that movie. Now, um, I love, you guys know, I love 80s goth music. I love 80s synth. I love anything that vibe. The band Boy Harsher, they are a current present day band. Uh, but they did created this horror movie with the lead singer um, and the creatrix of King Woman. I can never pronounce her name right. I will put the link to her Instagram below. She was the star of this little horror movie, this short indie horror movie called The Runner. It's one of my favorite, like just for 80s, late 80s vibes, kind of that like gothy, counterculture just gorgeousness and the feel of this movie is so yummy and it's just visually so pleasing so when she had stated to me that she was accepting requests for horror movie titles for candles I was like I mean I love The Shining there's so many horror movies I could have gone with but I really wanted The Runner because it's unique it's different and I feel like it's like super close to my heart it just it brings me like so many good just mm. Things I, I loved about my mother when I was little before they, they joined the, the religion that they did. So she crafted this one. I love that it has red lipstick on it. That's the image she chose. Electric Violet, Blood Lips, Pink Sugar, 
forest flowers and it's um, I haven't burned it yet because I'm saving it for a ritual but look at the top isn't it beautiful and it's a very it's very unique and different for me um, and so and it also really correlates well with Venus who I've been reconnecting with as a goddess I mean she is my ruling dignitary so I should probably hang out with her a little bit more but this is actually perfect for Venus and so I'm going to be using this in a ritual for her but oh my god this is amazing if you have a favorite horror movie and you sent her a request she will not disappoint you on that Along with spiritual practice, um, I love Mary Henlon's goddess statues for devotional practice. And I have been working with this Santa Muerta one. I love, love, love this devotional um, statue. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. I mean, some of you know how much I love her, um, her work. If you follow me on Instagram, I kind of repost her stories and what she's doing out there in the world a lot because I really, really love her stuff. But this one has been really, really sacred and felt really, really powerful for me in my practice. And I got the okay from the goddess herself to share this with you all. So I'm going to put the link to Mary Henlon's statues in case you want to explore that. Um, I recently shared in the Babylon video the podcast Moonbeaming with Gabby Herstick. And um, that is a podcast I really recommend if you're new to witchcraft or to exploring a life that's lived very intentionally uh, in relation to the sacred feminine and the divine. It's a really great podcast. I'll put the link to that below as well. I have a lot of links to remember. You guys know I suck at that. But in that podcast, um, she interviewed Gabby Herstick, and um, she is someone who considers herself, uh, you know, a, a sacred prostitute and working in alignment with that face of the dark feminine. So I purchased her book, Sacred Sex, and I've really been enjoying reading this. This is how to bring sacred sexuality into a full-bodied spiritual practice for yourself. So far, I'm about... 27 pages in. So far, it's been really, really enjoyable. Um, I think it covers a lot of ground for newbies. So if you're a seasoned practitioner in regards to bringing sacred sexuality into your practice, there may be some pieces that feel um, very beginner level for sure. But if you're looking for ritual or if you're looking to heal wounds around your sexuality, this is a really great book and I highly recommend it, even though I'm only that far in. Okay, music wise, guys, I have recently discovered the metalcore band Currents and I am obsessed with their music. They have a new single called Remember Me. I can't stop. I cannot stop listening to it. So uh, that album is not out yet to purchase on vinyl. That comes out in, I think, May. Perfectly in alignment with my birthday. But I did purchase, look at this. Isn't this so yummy? Guys, I'm obsessed with vinyl, and if I can get a, a new colorway, it just tickles my little Torian heart. But this album is, hold on, let me just, I can't multitask there, and I don't want to hurt my vinyl. Um, this album is called The Way It Ends, and it's really, really, really good. Definitely worth a listen if you like metalcore, deathcore, hardcore. Um, if you're an old school punk person, you'll you'll be able to line up with that really like atmospheric and melodic and it just takes you to a place when you listen to their music. And they're a little more um, music focused than say like Knocked Loose. So if you have hang out with me on Instagram and you've heard me with some of the Knocked Loose tracks and those are a little bit too much for you, um, Currents is like bridges the gap there in a really nice way. The other band I've been listening to nonstop all winter and it really just fits the never ending snow vibe is the band Funerals. So they are a doom, um, doom metal, doom core band. And oh my God, do they create an atmosphere with their albums? And I'm trying to get that to not show shine. There we go. Um, they're very dark. They're very atmospheric. And you really listen to the album all the way through. Like I, to me, they're not a single track band. Like I, 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 I'm like totally tapped into listening all the way through. I have all of their albums on vinyl. I really, really love Funerals. I can't recommend them enough if you like doom um, 
if you like typo negative, if you like that type of feel in your music, you're going to like their music a lot. But this is their new album, Let the Earth Be Silent. I mean, look at, oh, they're just, you guys, you guys were made for me. I love you so much. Um, I really, really love this band. So if you're wanting to check that out, that's a very strong end of winter recommendation. Um, I have been taking turkey tail mushroom tincture for my health. It's, that is something that has been of concern for me of late. And I've really experienced some great results from that. So if you're into herbs, if you're into mushrooms, um, from a standpoint of holistic healing for the body, I would say give turkey tail a, tr a try. Um, that tincture has really been wonderful for me. Okay, so I have some book recommend, uh, well, books on my list that I'm reading right now. Has some interesting, I added a little extra that I don't normally include, but um, I've joined Book of the Month this year. I know. And I'm reading currently now The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This was the Feb one of the February picks. And I did get Wayward, uh, which was a March pick. And then I purchased, in addition, Amor Toll's The Lincoln Highway. So this one, I'm really intrigued to read because he really takes... Amor takes you to a place um, he, and they're long novels and they're very engrossing and I get very emotionally attached. So this takes place in 1954 and it's about um, this, this 18 year old named Emmett Watson and he's been on a work farm. He's lost family and he has to, his intention is to pick up his eight year old brother, Billy and head to California where they can start their lives anew. But when the warden drives away, Emmett discovers that two friends from the work farm have hidden themselves in the trunk of the warden's car. Together, they have hatched an altogether different plan for, for Emmett's future, one that will take them all on a fateful journey in the opposite direction to the city of New York. Spanning just 10 days and told from multiple points of views, Toll's Tal third novel will satisfy fans of his multi-layered literary style while providing them an array of new and richly imagined setting characters and themes. I'm really stoked to read this and I'm saving it. You know, when you really love a book and you save it for something very specific, like, you know, there's going to be a certain time, like, you know, it's not when you purchased it, but you know, that time's going to come. That's what I'm saving this for. And I have a feeling it's going to be in the middle of summer at the beach while Vincent plays. So I have not read that yet, but it's on my list. Wayward, I also have not started reading. Um, 2000, so this, this uh, seems to me to be kind of like weaves three. So it says, weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries. Wayward is an astonishing debut in an enthralling novel of female resilience. And there, I do feel that there is a witchy piece here because... We've got this kind of witchcraft thread weaving between all three of these women. So there's a 2019 storyline, a 1619 storyline, and a 1942 storyline. And I'm actually really intrigued to read this. This is the first um, published novel by this author, Amelia Hart. So this is Wayward by Amelia Hart. And then The Writing Retreat is not my normal kind of book at all, but I wanted something that was totally not what I normally read. So it's about these two best friends who fall out and there's this writing retreat and there's a sinister element. I am not that far into this one. I'm 23 pages in. Um, and it's written present day, which isn't my sweet spot. I like to go somewhere else when I read typically <laughs> than current day. But this kind of has an interesting voice. So if you're looking for something that's like murder mystery, intrigue, and two fighting best friends, then you might enjoy this one. So that's The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. And then to finish our time together, I'm going to talk about these two books and then I'm going to talk about the deck that I've been loving. Um, as I've said, I've really been re-exploring for myself this kind of correlation with The Scarlet Woman, Babylon the Great, and the energy of Venus and really getting back into alignment with the Magdalene um, in that path of what it is to be an embodied expression of the sensual sacred feminine. So part of that has been enjoying some romance novels. Um, I haven't given myself permission to like really sit down and enjoy a good naughty book in a long time. So I have two books that I've been reading along those lines. So one is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. It's very, this is very naughty. You, you need to like a little bit of like really naughty in your reading. Um, but this is like a kind of retelling of Hades and Persephone. I mean, you guys know that I'm, 
I have a thing for Hades. I always have. Um, so this is very yummy and naughty. And I have been reading Christine Feehan's Recovery Road. This is more romance, traditional romance novel kind of feel. Um, you know, I love a troubled guy and there's definitely a troubled guy in this and it's based on a, a motorcycle club and it's really cute. So these have, these two have been my little escape books over the last few weeks, just checking out and letting myself enjoy something that typically I would say, you know, I should be reading something more work focused. It's like, no, I'm going to give myself some permission to just enjoy something a little bit naughty and fun. So if you're looking for those type of reads, I definitely recommend those too. So I'm going to have my late winter favorites decks coming out. Don't worry. That's getting recorded very soon here. Um, but I have really been loving the mystical botanical Oracle guys. I, this is like this year's version of the white owl mystic arcana Oracle last year. I freaking love this deck and it's, it's moody. It's very like at the heart of that green witch, you know, that we all, that lives inside all of us who feel the call of the nighttime of um, herbs and plants and creation magic and lessening magic and ritual and spell and all of those wonderful, kind of like the romance of being a witch, right? Like, what draws you to want to explore a path where your spirituality gets to be so delicious and multifaceted instead of very 2D, very flat. And this, oh, I don't know, guys, I love this deck so much. So, 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 so much. So that is the Mystical Botanical Oracle. I am going to have, don't worry, my deck favorites coming out. So, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. And so many of you, not so many, a few of you asked if I would just share some like general things that I've been enjoying as part of my life, not so much work witchcraft reading focused. So these are some of my favorites right now. These are things that have been getting me through just really the really, really long, long months of winter here. Um, it's not been the easiest winter of my life. And so, but in other ways, it's been like really beautiful. Um, I am feeling very empowered in my path and as a woman um, and as a priestess in a way that I haven't in a long time. Um, and I've also chosen very consciously to be single. I've been single for over six months now and I'm really, really enjoying just the feeling of my own power not attached to another person's energy. And I really love it. And I, I intend to be single for a long time to come because it's really been just beautiful for me on my path. So I hope you are all doing well out there in the world. If you hung in over 30 minutes with me, wow, thank you. I love you. Um, I hope that you found some of these recommendations fun or enjoyable. Yeah, these are, these are the things that make up my life. These are the things that uh, go into being racing. So I am sending you all so much love and many blessings, and I will see you in the next video.